Hey everyone, Theresa May has had a fairly bad run of luck with her Brexit plans, so when I heard that she was heading out to Austria, I half expected her to land in Melbourne or Sydney after a miscommunication. Nonetheless, the plane touched down in Europe and she began a quick round of negotiations that turned out to be about as productive as a Venezuelan factory. Mrs May had gone over to Salzburg in order to push her checkers proposal again, but while Salzburg was once home to Mozart, this week it was more like that John Cage piece where there's utter silence for four minutes and nothing meaningful happens. The EU's position, like a pretentious European art film, is very black and white. You're either in the club or not, and Theresa May can either leave with no deal or sign up to one in which the UK continues to benefit from all the EU's supposed freedoms, like freedom of movement, freedom for the EU's court in Luxembourg to overturn British legal cases, and of course freedom for the Labour Party to not have to actually get around to deciding their position on any of the issues at stake. For Brussels, who want ever closer union, Britain gaining special status would be seen as the start of something precipitous, the diplomatic equivalent of a TV show introducing celebrity cameos or major cast changes. One other option on the table is of course the Brussels backstop, where England, Scotland and Wales get to go their own separate way but Northern Ireland becomes permanently annexed into being some kind of EU protectorate in much the same way the allegedly independent Kosovo has experienced over the last decade. Just as there will only ever be two series of faulty terrors, in this political farce there will only ever be two options on the table, one of which breaks up the UK and one of which likely leads to the overall breakup of the EU. In the midst of all of it, of course, you might even see the breakup of the Labour Party, with the more moderate MPs departing to form a new anti-Brexit centrist party at Westminster. Let's hope not, though, because the electoral charts and graphs are already way too colourful and garish in my mind without having to add a new pink or turquoise block to the mix, all for the sake of Tony Blair or Chukramuna's vanity. Anyway, see you next week. Please like these, click subscribe.